We are about to begin the humorous speech contest. So if you use some device that makes noise during the break, please turn it off. Or as my friend, a friend of mine says, set your phasers to stun. <laughs> Once the contest has begun, the sergeant at arms will secure the doors. Feels like traveling in a plane. So you're going to secure the doors. Uh, and the, the members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. The speaking order of the, of the contestants for the humorous speech contest. First speaker is Shauna Vesey. Second speaker, Roger Nelson. Third speaker, Ramon Josen. Fourth speaker, Janine Cerulli. Fifth speaker, Ruth Princess. Timer, are we ready? It's ready. There will be one minute of silence between the speeches where the judges will be asked to <coughs> mark their ballots. So please uh, remain quiet during that time. <coughs> the, uh, most of the speakers have asked that this lectern be removed, so I'm going to move it back here. Out of the way. And our first speaker, Shana Vesey. <coughs> and the gold medal winner is, the gold medal winner is Shana Vesey. Sydney Olympics 
and you are judged upon how many and the quality of flips that you can do while jumping on a trampoline. I kind of wonder what the rule books actually read in terms of age requirements. Is it this tall to compete? <laughs> and then next, handball. Now, I thought being an educated adult, I understood what handball was. I thought it was that racquetball-like sport that you play in a cement room. No, that Olympic committee is tricky. Mm -mm. Turns out it's somewhere in between soccer and dodgeball. <laughs> and there's actually an international handball federation. Now I want to quote something from them. According to this international handball federation, the game is quite fast and includes body contact as the defenders try to stop the attackers from approaching the goal. Contact is only allowed when the defensive player is completely in front of the offensive player. This is referred to as a player sandwich. <laughs> you know, we could throw in the five D's of dodgeball, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge, and we'd have ourselves a new Vince Vaughn movie. Throw in the American Dodgeball Association of America, and we'll just start a league right here in the area. I mean, thank heavens that we have the adult sports, like shooting. Because as a lifetime member of the NRA, I'm so happy that the Olympic Committee decided that my Second Amendment rights were important to everybody else, because no one else has a Second Amendment but the United States. But thank heavens for shooting, because, you know, the Confederacy has this in the bag. just wanted to let you know that. I'm thinking to myself, there's some guy down there right now going, hey, Billy Bob, we're going to get ourselves into the Olympics. We're going to head on down there to Walmart, pick ourselves up some ammo, and head right on down there. We got this thing in the bag. <laughs> Hopefully, in another four years, they'll throw in noodling and bass fishing. <laughs> now, I, I, assuming from laughs that everyone knows what noodling is, but just to point it out, it's when you take your fist and you shove it into an underwater log you wait for a catfish to bite your fist, and then you pull it out and call it dinner. <laughs> I'm not lying here, folks. I went to school in Oklahoma. This is serious stuff. <laughs> you know, if we decided to do this and throw in this bass fishing and throw in noodling, we could have the whole thing brought to you by the Great Outdoors channel, and Bear Grill will host. Who needs Bob Costa when you've got Bear Grill up there? But seriously, folks. When it comes to the real sports, that's where America pulls through. That's where we bring the best athletes, the most agile athletes. That's where we succeed. They can have table tennis. They can continue to cheat at badminton. <laughs> but we will keep our hardcore sports. Watch out, Rio. You only got four years to prepare for America. USA! 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 Our next speaker, Roger Nelson, vote for me, vote for me, Roger Nelson. Mr. Toastmaster and my fellow Americans, as a candidate 
for President of the United States of America, I humbly ask for your vote. But why should you vote for me? What makes me a great candidate for President? Allow me to answer that question by describing for you what an awful, miserable slime ball my opponent is. <laughs> <laughs> my opponent has run nothing but mudslinging negative campaign ads against me, while I have taken the high road by running issue-oriented comparison ads. For example, while my opponent misrepresents my education policy, my 100% truthful ads compare my pro-learning policy to my opponent's plans to replace public school teachers with trained orangutans. <laughs> While my opponent completely misrepresents my jobs plan, my completely honest ads compare my pro-growth policies to my opponent's plans to outsource the outsourcing of our jobs. <laughs> While my opponent smears my social policies with wild hyperbole, I compare my enlightened policies to my opponent's evil, fiendish plan to destroy civilization as we know it. Now, my opponent said, promises that he will make the difficult decisions to turn our economy around. But here's my promise to you. I will increase spending on every government program anybody wants. <laughs> I will cut taxes for every single American. And I will balance the federal budget. <laughs> All in my first year in office. Now, my opponent says that I can't do that. He claims it's mathematically impossible. <laughs> well, let me make this perfectly clear. My presidency will not be held hostage to undeniable arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> Irrefutable facts will not interfere with my thinking. <laughs> In my administration, reality will not impede our progress. <laughs> my opponent further claims that under my policies, all of our entitlement programs will go bankrupt during my term in office. Oh, please, hear the facts. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office has studied my policies. They've scored them and determined that our entitlement program will not go bankrupt during my term. Rather, they will go bankrupt shortly after my term. <laughs> Which clearly means that this inevitable, catastrophic disaster will be my successor's fault, <laughs> not my fault. In keeping to the high road, my campaign will not propagate any of the rumors circulating about my opponent. For example, we will not repeat the rumor that my opponent is secretly the real father of Snooky's baby. <laughs> Although, I do think he was America an explanation on this point. We will not repeat the rumor that my opponent plagiarized his master's thesis from an article in Good Housekeeping magazine. <laughs> but once again, I think he owes us an explanation. I will not even mention the rumor that my opponent is really a vampire, <laughs> or the rumor that he doesn't like mom or apple pie, or the rumor that he can't tie a bow, <laughs> Or the rumor that he wears ladies' underwear. <laughs> or the rumor that he grows marijuana in his backyard. No, I will not even mention these rumors. Nevertheless, I still think he owes us an explanation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Finally, my opponent says that I'm wishy-washy, that I'm a flip-flopper. Well, let me tell you this. Whether you are in favor of more government regu regulation or less regulation, whether you are for gay rights or opposed to them, whether you are in favor of more military spending or less, wherever you come down on the important issues facing this nation, I will stand and fight for whatever position you take with every ounce of my being. <laughs> Friends, your choice is clear. Vote for me. Vote for me. <coughs> Vote for me. For you see, there is one immutable truth that even my opponent has never disputed. If you elect me the next president of the United States of America, you will get the government you deserve. <laughs> Mr. Tolkien. Before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to notice that our target speaker clearly had nothing to do with the selection of refreshments. Yeah. Since it's all coffee. Um, our next speaker is <coughs> Ramon Joseph. I know I'm sexy for my age and I know it. I know I'm sexy for my age and I know it, Ramon Joseph. Contest chair, fellow Toastmaster, honored guest. I have a friend named Jerry. Jerry, he looks like George Clooney. He's a good looking guy. Only thing with Jerry, sometimes he walks like this. Hi, how are you doing, guys? Can I take you home, Dad? And then, Jerry thinks that every time. He runs a marathon, is getting younger and sexier. You know, through the years of running marathons, we've encountered some difficulties. Sometimes remembering our kids' name or wife's name, <laughs> or, you know, these this things that uncontrollable sound that's coming from our back especially when you run. It's a little hard when you run here, that you hear prut, 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 and then you look around. Look around and someone is not listening because you don't want people to hear that nasty sound. Well, <coughs> the only good thing about getting older, people think like those nice looking ladies that we are harmless. They, just kind of kid us around, old man, you know, smooth around. That's why my friend Jerry thinks that we are too sexy for our age. But really, you know why? 
our main, main problem when we're running marathon is not our memory or our gas problem. It was how to hold that water inside our tummy for four to five hours without going to the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> so in our quiet moment, we cannot talk. And one time Jerry said, hey, buddy, maybe we can just wear an adult diaper. So Jerry, it might be a little, you know, and holding, maybe holding in our pants, and there's a lot of security along the route. They might think we got a deadly bit more over there. So we didn't do that. In 2007, it was the hottest day in the history of Chicago Marathon. While we're running, never mind, running, then Jerry said, hey, buddy, you know what? We can just do it inside our pants. So, how are you going to do that? You're going to be hot in there, you're going to be itchy in there, you're going to be sticky in there. Jerry said, No. You see those fire trucks along the way that sprinkle water on us? We can just pretend that taking a shower, and we're like, Ugh. And it's all gone. I said, You know, Jerry, if you want, you can do it. But you guys, if you're going to ask me if I did it, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Another marathon, 2010. It was a nice, beautiful day. The only thing with my body is, after we started the race, he kind of get, keep on eating, getting some food from a bystander. And you know, when you run a marathon, that's 26.2 miles. It's not good to just keep on hitting. So we keep on running, and running, and running. When we passed the 18 miles marker, Jerry said, hey buddy, I'm gonna go. I told Jerry, why don't you do it? You know, inside your pass, you go to the fire truck, and just pretend you're taking a shower. Jerry said, no, it's the other way around. So I said, why don't you go to one, fall in line of one, those poor parties, no way! I trained so hard for this marathon to qualify for the Boston Marathon. So I'm not going to wait. So I said, what are you going to do, Jerry? Run? So we, we keep on running. Keep on running. And then, when we passed the 22 miles marker, we saw a single porta potty at the back of the building. No line. Jerry ran in there, do his things, and I run a little bit slower so he can catch up. And after a couple of seconds, Jerry was running with me again. I said, hey, buddy, it's only two seconds. You did it. So Jerry said, yeah, I'm all done. So we keep on running. Then we notice the people who are watching the marathon, they're smiling at us. Now they are laughing at us. They are waving at us. So we went back, run a little faster. Very fast. And then one of the runners caught up with us and told Jerry, Hey, buddy, you got a long strand of toilet paper at the back of your pants. Uh, <laughs> when I look, it's all over. So we run faster. After we uh, passed the finish line, people were pointing at my back. Pointing my so I look, I got a toilet paper too, and I didn't even go to the washroom. <laughs> then I look looking for my body. And there he is. He was talking to a nice-looking macho guy and said, I told you, honey, I still got it. Got this chair? Can I please me alert, alert you when one minute has passed? <clears throat>
Our next speaker, Janine Cerulli, undecided. Undecided, Janine Cerulli. choices, 
I become overwhelmed, almost to the point of indecision. I once stood at the grocery store in front of the dairy case for 20 minutes, <laughs> trying to decide what kind of butter to buy. <laughs> and not only did I have a variety of brands to choose from, but I also had to pick a form. Did I want margarine, butter spread, butter spray, buttery squares, whipped butter, butter quarters? It was like I was afraid of making a choice, or a wrong choice. And when I can't make a choice, I don't make a choice. And a broad field of possible speech topics has the same effect on me. And finally, the best reason of all why I'm a proficient procrastinator, I learned from the very best, my mother. I truly believe that genetics are at play here, as my mother was, still is, the master of delaying the inevitable. She would get up at 5.30 in the morning, see my father off to work, then she would fall asleep on the couch until the kids were ready to go off to school, and she'd give us a wave and a kiss. And then until 3 o'clock, the day was hers, where she got caught up in the daily drama of her soaps, instead of the soap suds of laundry and housework. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around 3 o'clock when we got home, and it was an hour until my father arrived, she would then suddenly rush around, hurriedly get dressed, give us our chores to do so that dinner would be on the table and my dad would be happy. Nothing like waiting the last minute, right? So, there you have it. My three, the dog ate my homework, <laughs> explanations as to why I procrastinate. I rest my case. But the jury is still out because deliberations have not yet begun. Maybe they're procrastinators too. Mr. Toastmaster. Will the timer give me one minute, please? Our fifth speaker, Ruth Princess. We have the power to change. We have the power to change. Ruth Princess. Did you know laughing burns calories? If you laugh through my entire speech, you can burn enough calories to eat one Hershey's Chocolate Kiss guilt-free. <laughs> Some of you are getting ready to laugh. According to Vanderbilt Medical Center, laughing increases your metabolism and you continue to burn those calories even after you stop laughing. But in order to get that benefit, you need to laugh for five to seven minutes. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and our sexy athletes, <laughs> have you ever tried to diet? If you've ever tried to diet, you know it's no laughing matter. It makes you want to swear. That's why diet is a four-letter word. <laughs> <laughs> There's the laugh. <laughs> Not only is diet a four-letter word, it's also an acronym. Depression induced by eating tofu. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest example, pun intended, was the advice from
from the 1980s to give up fat in our diet. How depressing. We were told to eat foods that the big business companies added sugar to to compensate for the unsatisfying fat-free taste. Now, obesity is a big, big problem. <coughs> you know it's true. If you've ever been on an airplane, squished in the metal seat. <laughs> the Center for Disease Control verified that two out of every three Americans are overweight. <laughs> but we have the power to change. And society is changing again. What is the real diet danger? I gave you a hint. Sugar! <laughs> what might sugar stand for? Society's urge to gorge and abdominal reshaping. <laughs> Reshaping's just another word for change. Let me tell you about a change my mom went through. Not the big change. When my Mayflower Methodist mom got married, she didn't know how to cook. She put the tea kettle on the stove and walked away to care for her five kids. My mom burned water. But my mom, she took the power and she changed. She learned how to cook chocolate chip cookies, candies, and cupcakes. I underwent some reshaping myself. But I took the power and I changed. I gave up chocolate chip cookies, candies, and rice cakes. It's really easy to give up rice cakes. But how dare they defame the word cake? I'm one to talk. While dieting, I put tofu into my sugar-free cheesecake. Talk about depressing. But I didn't give up chocolate. Chocolate is good for you. Chocolate has antioxidants. Where's our speaker? It's actually better for you than tea. Chocolate has iron and fiber and protein. What is the origin of chocolate? A plant. Cocoa, cocoa. cocoa bean! Oh, good catch. Cocoa bean. Did you hear that? Beans. Beans, the magical fruit. Beans burn belly fat. What other healthy ingredient is in chocolate? Milk. Milk, who said that? Whoops, <laughs> oh, sorry. Milk for strong bones. Milk does a body good. My change worked. I heard. Congratulations, Ruth. Ruth, we're so proud of you. Because I lost 54 pounds. It took me three years. But I finally found them again. <laughs> but I'm taking the power, and I'm changing again. I've lost another 33.3 pounds and wrote a diet book. Do you want to know what I weigh? Buy my book, Diary of a Fat Female, only $2.99, now available at Amazon. <laughs> but when you read the book, please don't tell the DMV or my husband what I weigh. My <laughs> husband pretends I'm my wedding weight, which is probably why we've been married 22 years. My wedding weight also happens to be my driver's license weight. <laughs> the last time I went to the DMV, the scrawny male clerk had fear in his eyes. I think he was afraid if he asked my weight, I'd sit on him! <laughs> but I have the power to change. And it's hard to lose weight when big business is bombarding you with brownies, bonbons, blueberry buns, butterscotch bars, and baklava. My dad used to make baklava. Cooking is in his genes. Italians cook for their families. Greeks cook for everyone else. In my hometown, my family owns so many restaurants, 
One of them was Chinese. <laughs> Do you know what you get when you cross a chocoholic woman with a Greek man? A baby Ruth! <laughs> a baby Ruth has peanuts, and peanuts have protein, and they come from the bean family just like chocolate. Remove the sugar, and I'm a walking health food. So the next time you need the power to change, think about the Baby Ruth Diet. I'm going to do this relatively quickly because I know that we've scheduled ourselves to be out at noon, although I doubt seriously that we'll make that, but maybe shortly after that. Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, contestants and let, get us, let us get a, uh, I'll try saying that sentence again. And let's see if we can learn a little bit about them and what brought them here today other than their vehicles. So let's start with our, other than, let's start with our uh, uh, evaluation contestants. Um, so, Chuck Yeager, could you come on up, please? Just quickly, you've been with Toastmasters.
master's for how long? Seven years, and I, no, seven years, and I took a two-year break. In the middle somewhere, two-year yeah. break, okay. Um, and you're with which club? Uh, Kickstarters and Downers Grove. Okay. Meet, uh, Wednesday mornings at 645, if you'd like to come. <laughs> This is the one who's going to go to your thing at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> My club meets at night, okay? <laughs> um, and I have to ask, any relation? Not that I know of. Not that you know of. To the test pilot, Chuck Yeager. Okay. Uh. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, what, what is it that... Uh, uh, what is it that led to your deciding to, to participate in the evaluation contest? For evaluations? Uh, well, they needed uh, a participant in the area <laughs> contest. <laughs> I said, okay, I will. So you were a volunteer? Yeah, and it's part of my, my humor speech was part of you know, me volunteering for the evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> the, my, the, whatever I place will be the, the biggest joke of it. <laughs> Well, you know, that's a good thing to do, and I personally think that the evaluation contest is probably the most challenging thing to do because you really don't know what you're going to say when you leave the room until you, until you sit down and start writing those notes. Um, I'm going to ask that our uh, division governor wait until we do, no, wait, do you want to do them now? Are you ready? I'm, I'm doing them as you talk. As we speak, good. <laughs> It's called just in time certificates. <laughs> you know, organizing these things is really a challenge to do, and sometimes just in time is the best, best way you can do. So, Chuck, thank you so much for participating here. Thank you so much. Great experience. Thank you. Kathy Antoine. That's amazing! <laughs> the Kathy had to leave. So I'll accept on her behalf very quickly. She's been a member for several years. She said when she started out, she did a lot of ums and ahs, and she's come a long way. Been very dedicated to our, our group of old group Toastmasters as a group, and uh, she's happy to be here, and thanks all of her fellow Toastmasters for being here. Wow, what a great job she has! <laughs> I've never had a stand-in for this part. <laughs> uh, our next contestant, Prez Vasilev. You know, I should be able to pronounce this guy's name. He is in my club. So, <laughs> after all this time, I should be able to get it. Uh, and that club is? Windy City Professional Speakers. And that's one of the clubs you're in. How many of them are you in? Well, I'm in six. Oh. So oh. I'm subscribed to a more kind of advanced program, you know. Yeah, I think so. Of course. <laughs> six clubs, yeah. So what does he do besides, what does he do for fun, right? Well, right now I'm pretty busy because I'm preparing for my vice presidential campaign. <laughs> Actually, me and uh, Roger Nelson are on the same ballot. <laughs> so vote for him. Vote for him. Vote for me. Yeah, that's good. That, that's good, Mr. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd prefer. Never mind. <laughs> well, thank you for participating you. in the contest today. That's just fraught with danger, me talking about politics with, uh, <laughs> with you, Ben Dunbar, in the room. Uh, <laughs> um, our, next, uh, our next speaker, uh, our next uh, evaluator was Tom Parker. So, Tom, come on up. Please. Accountant, but a typewritten form, that's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in the organization? Uh, almost two years. Almost two years, and you're with club? Which club? Downers Grove Toastmasters. Yeah. In Village Hall in the evening. I know there's another uh, club that meets, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. There's a club that meets in the morning? Uh, there's a corporate club with the actual village, so an employee club. Wow. Downers Grove is uh, just a hotbed of Toastmasters. Um, and what caused you to decide to participate in this one? 
you know, I found evaluations to be one of the more challenging aspects as I've been in the club and started doing evaluations. Uh, it's off the cuff, ad hoc, and you know, yeah. push yourself to great heights, you gotta take the game, take the chance. I have long said that I think one of the reasons that people leave Toastmasters is because of the evaluations. Not getting them, having to get them. <laughs> so I, I couldn't agree more with you. Well, thank you so much for participating, Tom. <laughs>
stick out for for, uh, for procrastinating? Sure. Okay, good. Um, just checking because I've got this all this mess here. Um, Gene, you're with Lunch Club? Can you um, Village of Downers Grove, so the other one that Tom talked wow. about. So our, it's our employee group. And how long have you been a member? Uh, just about a year. About a year, right? The club's that old, yeah. We're a new club, too. Brand new club, excellent. Um, and what caused you to decide that uh, you were going to procrastinate your way into this <laughs> session today? I was drafted, so I was out of town when they held the meeting and they talked about the contest. And next thing you know, I get an email like, hey, we nominated you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, those, all those who are interested in volunteering, step forward, right? <laughs> well, thank you for participating in spite of procrastinating. We appreciate your efforts. I'm representing PIPS, People in Public Speaking. We meet at McDonald's corporate offices every Monday at noon. And the reason I'm with them is because when I was in the Hinsdale Club, I could only make it once a month. And I need to talk more than once a month. I'm also in uh, Windy City. I always like hearing that. That's my, my club, obviously. So, um, And what caused you to decide you were going to talk about this uh, topic that, um, today? I was at a Windy City meeting getting ready for the international contest, and I made a joke in my introduction about gaining weight. So I'm like, you know, maybe I should lose that weight that I've gained. And uh, I've lost, I believe, 33.3 pounds since that joke in uh, February. Point three. That's keeping really close track. <laughs> I don't have a scale that goes that close. Okay. So thank you very much for participating. Today. And the best part of being the Toastmaster for this contest is when you get to say, so to give the results, I'm going to turn this over to the division governor who conveniently has walked in with the results. So Let's give a big round of applause for our students. Thank you for retirement and help me out here. So I really appreciate that. He is one of those few people in the room who picks up the call. It says yes, and there's a few others in here, and you know who you are, so I'm not going to call you up. But at this moment, to help me give out the awards, I am going to ask the trio, please join me up the here at the podium. We've got <laughs> ten and
probably the most organized the morning spent all day. <laughs> <laughs> so our third place co um, contestant, and I'd like to thank her for participating, Shauna Bessie. Shauna. <laughs> talk to anyone with alter, about alternative medicine, alternative healing, uh, as well as to get health foods and that type of thing. So please come on. Thank you. Yeah, the Acting Masters Down the Road Club is sponsoring the showing of the movie Speak on October the 16th, which is a Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. at the Downers Grove Public Library. Week, so I need help. 
I wasn't going to say anything, but while they're getting this good, there you go. North Division Contest. I'm Ethel Goatee, North Division Governor. Our contest is next Saturday. You know, Motel 6 says that they'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> We're going to greet you at the door. So come on down to Northbrook Public Library, 1201 Cedar Lane. We are on the District 30 calendar. Hope to see you there. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming this morning. I know Saturday was a busy day. Trying to find this place. And have a wonderful meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.